In this video, we will show you how we install an aerial hammock next to our pole here in our living room. Note that Parker has a background in construction and he knows how to do all of this stuff to make it secure. I don't recommend doing this unless you have a professional with you. Um, with that said, I want to show you all the steps that we take to make sure it's secure. And Parker, do you want to tell them a little bit about what you plan to do here? Well, the first step is safety. And I think we have another clip of showing, uh, replacing a light here and making sure that any kind of power to the area is off and clear. There's some various simple cheap tools uh, like this handy little guy that'll tell you if there's power to a specific wire. What's that called? I have no idea. Uh, the Sperry. No, no. That's a brand. I'm pretty sure that's a brand. <laughs> but it will, if there's power in a cable, it will. I don't think that's in the shot. It will light up and make noise and be better. Oh. But I know. So first step is to find where your roof joists are going. I know that ours are going across here and that this light is butt right up against a joist here. For doing the hammock, you can either screw, if you have found and know where a joist is, you can screw uh, a heavy anchor screw directly into that joist. Um, but in, some, in most of these older homes, uh, if you do that in the middle of a room like this, uh, it can, uh, if you have any kind of weight on it, and I'm fairly big, <laughs> uh, you'll see the whole ceiling move. So there are some things that we're going to do today to show how to minimize that, how to minimize possible damage to your roof, and make sure that it is as safe and secure as possible. Mm -hmm. And note that if you are wanting to do things like drops and stuff like that with dynamic falls in your hammock or your silks, this isn't recommended. I would recommend to go to an actual aerial studio with the rig set up professionally to try those drops. This kind of hammock that we use, we use it for stretching and strengthening, um, not as many dynamic drops. So just a note there. Um, and Parker, do you want to tell them kind of why you're qualified to do this? What your background is in or anything like that? No. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> when people are like, Parker is so smart. What is his background in? How does he know how to do this stuff? Well, I grew up, bo both my parents uh, are in large commercial construction. Uh, my dad is a structural engineer. My mom is a mechanical engineer. And from the time I was a little, little guy, I made a mistake one summer of telling my dad I was bored. And from that moment <laughs> on, I uh, worked in construction. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> so I worked with every uh, every subtrade, uh, did uh, electrical, uh, and this is with commercial companies, supervised by journeymen electricians, plumbers, uh, worked with uh, carpentry, millwork, uh, co concrete, um, what else? Uh, I think that's enough. I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, uh, years and years and years of, of doing that, and uh, all through high school and the mm -hmm. first part of university, uh, before I became a computer nerd. Uh, and then now I uh, renovate homes, uh, have uh, renovated this house, uh, and. Different video, we'll show you. So that's that where sense. the qualification comes from. And the math and physics, 
well, it helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, being able to understand uh, how loads transfer um, and the the general uh, structure of, of a structure <laughs> yeah. helps. Cool. And just so you guys know, if you're wanting to know how to have a home circus of your own, first step, find one of these. <laughs> this one's mine though, so. Other than that, um, we will show you our actual rig that he built in the backyard, which is out of wood and metal reinforcements and took all summer last year. It's an amazing work of art. <laughs> Um, but yeah, now we're trying to get a hammock um, closer to the pole, mainly because we have these backdrops here. So I have a black one for light painting photography, white one is more for um, product photography, yoga videos, stuff like that. And we've had this pole in here, um, but only a hammock in the backyard, and it's been cold still. So we want to try and figure out how to get a hammock right here, as well as right there, if you can see, is our in the middle of the living room hammock. Um, yeah, most, most boyfriends probably wouldn't let you do this to, to their house, but this one is very special. Mwah. And this is an X-Pole. Uh, X-Pole. See the link below. Uh, Good job. <laughs> and it is just a uh, pressure fit uh, mm -hmm. here. So there's no, this isn't screwed in anywhere. It is purely, uh, uh, comes in sections and, and pieces and will uh, you kind of screw it to until it's pressure fit and follow the directions it's really simple to put up and take down there's actually a YouTube video of it we'll link it below <laughs> so this isn't holding up anything isn't really part of the structure uh, but because we have it here and um, people are swinging on it and we want to make sure that it is as safe as possible, mm -hmm. we're going to add uh, from the attic uh, extra reinforcement um, spanning between the ceiling joists to, to add a, a lot more stability and it will allow the weight to be transferred across multiple uh, spans uh, of the ceiling joists and makes it feel feel a lot more stable and is a lot more stable and safe. Cool. So you do want to put the X-Pole on a joist? Yes. Correct? Okay. Ideally. And joists are the same thing as support beams? I don't know this stuff. No. <laughs> Well, tell us, because they don't know either. Um, so you have load-bearing walls, which would be uh, our, the one to the left here that is actually supporting the ceiling joists that go across. Okay. The ceiling joists will sit on like your exterior wall and uh, usually an interior uh, load-bearing wall with mm -hmm. new modern construction uh, you can you they can use uh, steel beams to have uh, much longer uh, distances and spans uh, between walls to, to make much larger rooms but this house is from a uh, hundred years ago so it is uh, it's old, but it was built when they knew how to build houses. So it is uh, pretty sturdy. Um, it's pretty sweet. So. <laughs> cool. It, what's a stud then? Uh, a stud typically is just a piece of uh, two by four, uh, which isn't actually two inches by four inches. Although in a house this old, they actually, like the, the main load-bearing wall that we have here actually is real two by four inch uh, pieces of lumber wow. and wood, uh, which is what makes some of these older ones a little, or um, stable. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to say more because modern construction techniques are vastly superior, but... Uh, 
Yeah, I guess I was just confused between the difference between a joist and a support beam and a stud. So a stud typically is uh, in the wall. Uh, okay, that's vertical. where you're hanging the paintings in. Yeah, so that's, uh, if you're trying to hang your TV, uh, you want to find a wall stud uh, Got it. and hit that. Uh, ceiling joists are kind of the same thing, but just uh, two by fours, uh, sometimes they can be two by sixes, whatever that's uh, going across uh, the room uh, and your ceiling, it's what holds up your ceiling or supports your second floor. Soon to be a second floor. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right, let's get started. Let's get started. Uh, and, and to be clear, it's just him. I'm not doing any of this. So I, I already know uh, where the electrical is, and I know that I am safe right here, uh, that there's no, there's no power running directly here. I know that the ceiling joist is running along here. You can try to use various uh, stud finders, like this guy, to, to try to locate a stud. And there's one, and coming from the other direction. Yep, it's right there. So that that can be the the easy way if, if you're just installing just a straight hook, um, which lots of times is enough uh, for a hammock if it's not if you're not in a, a really large uh, room. Uh, but for us, uh, I'm I actually want to put I'm gonna put a long screw through the ceiling uh, so that I can know where it is in the attic uh, to know where I want to place the hammock and we can uh, build our additional support uh, from above and, and know where this hammock is going to go. So I'm just going to line this up. Oh, actually, uh, a handy trick uh, when you're trying to uh, screw into the roof is having a paper plate and just poking a hole in it with your drill. And then wherever you're wanting to locate it, screwed it through and caught most of the dust and Yay. mix of stuff. We can make it a little cleaner. Katie will be less annoyed. Yes. <laughs> but you're doing all this for her, so really. All right, let's go upstairs. Okay. Check out what's happening. We didn't even know how to tighten a drill. Huh? Me and Katie Joe didn't even know how to tighten the drill. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of drill do you got there? This is a Makita. That's the best Corded. one, right? It's my favorite. Because the cordless ones lose power so fast. The the new cordless new cordless ones are are excellent. Uh, by, by pretty much all of the manufacturers. They are excellent for uh, actual contractors that are working on a site that has limited power uh, and you have to worry about cords and stuff uh, uh, in other people's ways. Uh, but for at home, uh, I know that we have power and I've got extension cords. Uh, the corded one will never run out of power and uh, uh, typically they can have a lot more beefier, uh, more torque, uh, more speed, more options. Cool. All right, so here was the light that we uh, previously installed. Uh, I actually had to uh, remove uh, this uh, old crossbeam
uh, that was uh, actually had the old light uh, harness was screwed onto the bottom of it, uh, which was really the only reason it was it was there. Uh, but for our purposes, adding some additional uh, support between the joists uh, will is, is what is what we're looking for. Um, these are just one and a half, uh, well, two by fours, but standard, uh, modern uh, two by fours. So I'm going to, uh, since I have, uh, I've taken the this temporary or this subflooring attic uh, plywood off uh, to expose the joists so that we can uh, work here. And you can see our screw that came up from uh, downstairs of this is where we want our uh, hammock to be and this is the joist that the the pole is positioned on uh, since I have this exposed I'm going to reposition it over a little bit and I'm going to uh, screw it in uh, from the other side and then just toenail it in uh, from this side yeah. And previously, it was just uh, some long nails uh, that I'm not going to hammer back in. I'm going to actually use some construction screws. <laughs> <laughs> the joists and never standing on or putting weight on the actual whatever ceiling material or, or you'll be going right through. Oh yeah my dad did that. His whole leg went through and we saw his legs dangling through the hallway. Yeah that's uh that's not good. That's not what you want. That's suboptimal. <laughs> Unscrew this. Yeah. Downstairs. I can try. Here. Here, hold on. You're gonna need a drill. Oh, I have to use the drill? Yeah. Which way is out? <laughs> you need to give me a pink drill. Is it? Yep. It'll yep. automatically come out. It is going, yep. But it's lefty loosey, righty tighty. Yeah, except it's, it's not always. It's set up for lefty loosey. Okay. Fold back any insulation that we've removed. Fasten it back in place. Okay. There we go. All right. Ah. There you go. Do it. Yep, you're good. Yes, please. Did you ever think you'd use your construction skills for <laughs> creating a home circus? Yes, yes I did. I always <laughs> knew. You always knew. It's always been a dream. Yes. <laughs> well, you found the right girl. <laughs> Is that light hitting you right? Just right. I mean, you look glorious.
Find a girl that'll lie to you. <laughs> in the right way. <laughs> Stop. So depending on the height of uh, your ceiling joists or what you're working with, uh, there's lots of different options for uh, these hanging hooks. Uh, and we'll see, we're going to have to just experiment and see uh, which one uh, fits the best uh, and uh, try it out. So the reason it's best to do it from the attic is because you can bolt it from the other side and not just have it screwing in, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So if, uh, typically, uh, if you don't have ac access to your attic, um, your screw would just be coming right in uh, to one of these uh, joists and it'll be supported uh, for uh, my house here. We've put uh, plywood, uh, just some sheets of plywood over the uh, insulation to add some additional uh, support uh, between uh, just the whole structure and uh, to be able to have it transfer the weight um, across uh, most multiple joists instead of just a single one that it's screwed into. Okay. So what we're going to try to do here is build up kind of a box that we will then uh, be able to put uh, this uh, the plywood back onto it and then I'll have um, a longer piece <laughs> like this one um, spanning across it as well uh, just to, so that it uh, can transfer as much weight around the whole uh, all the supporting uh, pieces instead of just the, the, the single uh, joist. So the more weight you can transfer across a broader surface area, the better? That's right. Just like uh, mm. if you're uh, walking on uh, ice on a lake, if you're standing up and putting all your weight on one single spot, mm. you can fall right through. If you distribute your weight across more of an area, then there's no, or there's less weight per single point. So if you're on a sheet of ice, you should crawl. Absolutely. Or pull yourself Actually, on your don't, belly. Don't go on to the ice. <laughs> bad decision. <laughs> you want me to just keep it on and like leave you to it? We'll go make some dinner. <laughs> I could do that. And you earn some dinner. There you go. So what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do? Wait. Get in the first. Mm. Ah. Okay, dinner. So what I'm gonna try to do, um, since I know uh, we'll be uh, swinging on this hammock uh, downstairs, uh, and if I'm using one of these longer. Uh, ring hook things uh, instead of having it uh, all just uh, braced at the top I'm going to have a couple pieces of plywood um, with some two by fours and then screw through all of those so that just so that there's uh, uh, it's going through multiple layers like this uh, to hold against uh, any kind of uh, lateral movement, uh, which will just make it feel uh, a little more uh, secure and, and, and solid. Uh, and uh, if there is heavy uh, weight moving uh, laterally, it'll minimize any kind of uh, pressure put on the, the ceiling material uh, and prevent cracking and things like that. Make sure that all the holes lined up uh, before you screw everything together. Otherwise, you're going to be doing it again. <laughs> that never happened to me. <laughs>
And why is it best to um, also bolt it from above in the attic? Uh, by doing it this way, and this kind of gives you a, a look of, of kind of what uh, it'll be like uh, downstairs. Uh, we'll have a... Oops. We'll have it go through the ceiling. And then we have a washer so that the bolts don't, or the nuts don't uh, dig into the wood. And once we attach, the, the first bolt is to uh, get it all nice and tight. And then the second is a locking bolt with those two uh, tightened, uh, it'll prevent the first one from loosening and eventually this being pulled out. But you can see here, uh, since it's not one of the screw-in versions, even if this isn't uh, tightened all the way down where this won't move, if this rotates, the bolts aren't going to come out and you won't accidentally unscrew the hook and fall to your doom. <laughs> doom. Cause, and that's the other reason why we use a spinner, right? Is because uh, when you're using the spinner, then it makes it so you're not unscrewing anything. That's right. But even if we didn't, it wouldn't because you have two bolts on top. Correct. Okay. But we tighten this, we'll, we'll tighten this down uh, enough that uh, it won't. It won't move. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. It's a sexy tool belt. This time I won't have to hammer it in. Because hmm. I'll actually have it all lined up properly. Screws. Yeah. I didn't use any wood glue, so whole pile of screws will will do for this project. So that's now tight enough that I actually have to screw the bolt to get it out. Uh -huh. Tight hole. So it's definitely not going to just slip out. <laughs> <laughs> it's riveting action. Go downstairs? Uh, yes. Okay, I'm in position. What? 
can't see your face. All right, put the, put the bolt through. Right now, push and twist. Put it, line it up the way that you want it. Um, I guess, okay. Twist it? No. Alright. Ta-da. Alright, that's it. That's it? Yep.
He's such a show off for the camera. Are you good? 